great one. Not seeing it yet, but it always takes it a second. We probably are. I think we're live. There we we might be live right now. We are. We're live. Are we? Yeah. Smile with your eyes, everybody. <laughs> Well, Amanda says we're live, so welcome to Facebook Live Friday. It is Friday, October 23rd, 2020. Uh, I'm your host, Todd, and let's welcome the panel. She's an award-winning photographer and videographer whose work has appeared digitally and in print across the country, Amanda Kemp. Hi, guys. And from City Hall to Capitol Hill, she's got her finger on the pulse of the politics that impact how you use your energy, our legal, legislative, and regulatory analyst, Caitlin Williams. Morning, everybody. And you'd be hard pressed to find anyone who knows more about our local water infrastructure than our special guest. She has been with the Huntsville Utilities Water Department for 25 years. This is your 25th year, isn't it? It's 25th, but actually 13th in the water. Oh, 13th in the water. Well, still, she knows more than I do about the water department. <laughs> uh, she is currently a chief water treatment plant operator here at Huntsville Utilities. Wilma Jackson, thank you for joining us, Wilma. Thank you. What we're going to talk about today, uh, on Sunday, you may remember, we sent out a post about, it was the 48th anniversary of the Clean Water Act, which was uh, became effective in 1972. A lot of people were surprised by that. They thought, really, the, the Clean Water Act has only been around in my lifetime. <laughs> so for a lot of people, I uh, uh, thought, well, it's got a, surely it's been around longer than that, and it hasn't, and don't call me Shirley. And so we talked a lot about that. A lot of people were really interested in that. Uh, we did a follow-up to that uh, story we found from the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources where they showed uh, a map where they track occupied bald eagle nests in the state of Wisconsin. And they were able to show that ever since the Clean Water Act went into effect, the population had just skyrocketed. And they direct, that was one of the things they directly attributed to was the Clean Water Act. <clears throat> Wednesday, was the International Imagine a Day Without Water, which is a day to highlight the importance of water infrastructure in our lives and businesses. Um, and we talked about that. Tomorrow is the second, they have two of these each year, uh, the national, the DEA's National Prescription Drug Take Back Day. Uh, we're a big supporter of that because a lot of people think, oh, it's old expired medicine, I'll just flush it. Don't do that, it can be very harmful to the environment. So uh, it's been a big week to talk about water, and that's why Wilma is here. So uh, let's start a little bit with, um, let's talk about clean water. Uh, the Clean Water Act uh, may put in regulations so that uh, businesses and industries could not just dump pollutants into surface waters, lakes, rivers, coastal regions. And because of that, where we live, of course, we get so much of our water from the Tennessee River Obviously, that's something we think is really important, uh, the, keeping the, the water clean. So, but that's not, it's not just the magic bullet that gives us clean water. There's a lot that happens once the water gets to our water treatment plants Correct. that cleans it up even more. So maybe talk a little bit about that. Okay, well, at the water plants, uh, we pre-treat the water um, as it's coming in uh, with alum and bleach, and uh, if the pH is low, we'll, we'll put some caustic on there as well. Um, we monitor it all the way through the plants. We have um, analyzers that give us instant feedback, but our operators are doing constant testing on the water. How many, um, um, how many water treatment plants do we have in our system? Okay, we have three that are surface water plants that are actually getting the water from the Tennessee River. Okay. Two of which have a capacity of 48 million gallons a day. One, we just, uh, it was permitted for 12, and we just did a high rate study, and we now permitted for 24 million. Wow. Um, and then we have the groundwater plant, Lincoln okay. Dallas, that's uh, 9 million. Okay. And so we still get water from the ground, even though we've got so much water coming from the river? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, and, and actually it's cheaper to treat. It's not as cost, you know, doesn't yeah. cost near as much to treat. So we still have that. And where you see out, like next to Huntsville Utilities going through the canal, uh -huh. that's water that's coming from that source. That's, that's kind of cool. It is. Yeah. And so if we ever see like we're in a drought uh, time and the flow starts slowing down, mm -hmm. we can back off that plant <laughs> at that time. And we can literally use that as a visual. 
to know, but we also have it, you know, where we're getting feedback. And what a lot of people don't know is, you know, of course, the Big Spring was the first source of water for the settlers of this area, and it eventually went on to become the first water water system. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like the oldest water system west of the Appalachian Mountains. Right. So it's, that's a little bit of history there. And if you come to our lobby, um, you'll see two of the, it, it, the system was put together with hollowed out logs. And uh, you, we have two of the original ones up in the lobby you can come up and see. Now, speaking of the Clean Water Act, I was told since we have three different plants that pull from the Tennessee River, that there is some redundancy, like say that there is a spill upstream into the river, there is some redundancy so that we don't get that pollutant into our drinking water. Correct. Correct. What we, you know, through our testing, through whatever, you can start seeing something that has changed. It could be, you might see it with the raw pH first. Maybe it's been a 7.8 and then all of a sudden it's like a 7.1. Okay. So you know something has changed. Uh, because we lose, use alum, treatment of water is very pH driven. So that's one thing that you really want to look at. But you can start monitoring it, and like the first plant can contact the next plant and say, hey, this is what's happening, this is what I've done, this is how I'm treating this, and then they're prepared. And so they wow. kind of get a heads up before it gets there. Oh, cool. But also, if the first plant is having trouble treating the water, let's just say, you know, sometimes cold water just doesn't treat as well as warm water. If they start getting anywhere close to, um, like a contaminant level, which we don't usually, but because we're so far ahead of the curve, you know, if it's a three, we, we look at a one. <laughs> um, so they can contact the next plant and say, hey, I want to shut down for a little while. Let this water settle. Can you pick up my slack? So by having these extra plants, another one can beef it up, or, or two more, or three more can beef it up. And wow. you can allow any kind of problem to work itself out. That's awesome. And and one of those water treatment plants, the newest one, is pretty much state of the art. I mean, it's it kind of sets the bar for what you want in a water treatment plant. The Correct. south southeast, is it southeast or southwest? They all have yeah. south in the name, <laughs> and it confuses me. The southeast water treatment plant, which is down around Grant, and uh, yeah. it's a very impressive thing to see. In fact, we were we originally talked about going live from there this morning, but it's so far removed, we weren't sure we could get a strong enough signal to do that. Well, but, and with COVID, I mean, you guys, you guys. Yeah, there, we do have special coming. restrictions in place, yeah, because yeah. there are only so many of pe people who know how to do what you do. Right. And so we have special restrictions in place on who can go into the water plants because we, we can't really have that going on. And, and it's not just our water that we're testing. We get water from other uh, systems that we perform right. tests on. Yes, we do. And then one thing we're doing right now with COVID is we're social distancing to the extreme at the water plant. Oh, yeah. We've locked it down. If you are not a water plant operator, you don't need to be in there. You don't need to be upstairs. You could do something downstairs. If we have a need for a vendor, we try to have them use alternate stairs and alternate, yeah. you know, locations from the well, operator. And you guys keep those Th those plants are clean. I mean, oh, you yeah. could eat off the floor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they are pretty clean. I mean, we're very proud of our plants. And, you know, from the oldest to the newest. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you know, everybody's very proud. And uh, we've got a great crew. And, you know. Well, and something that's really interesting to see, um, and I believe we have a video of this on our YouTube channel, if you want to go back and look. Uh, last year, if you go out to the water treatment plant, which you're not going to do, but if you did, um, you would see a big area that basically looks like long rows of swimming pools. And that part of that is part of the filtration system. And so the water collects in there and it, and it filters through. I was going to say, she can tell us. Yeah, yeah. And, but it's really interesting. I think it's very interesting the way what they're using to filter the they're, water. They're not swimming pools, Todd. I know they're not. I found that out the hard way <laughs> when they yelled at me. But it's, it's, the, it's the stuff they use, and we got to see them replace that because yeah. it has to be replaced every, like, 20 years or something. Right. And uh, so, but t talk a little bit about what they're, how they're filtering that water. Okay. Well, what it actually does is it comes through, and we, um, it's a rapid mix, and that's where chemicals hit the water for the first time. And it goes through what we consider a flocculation 
channel, so to speak, and it's got arms that go up and down. It starts mixing it. Then it's going to move through sedimentation basin before it gets to our filters. And then it goes to our filters, and then it's gravity fed through the filter. Right. And so, I mean, that's pretty much the treatment process. Now, we're dosing it with chemicals at various times um, because we want to keep a chlorine residual. And we call it chlorine even though we're being bleach, but it's chlorine residual to stay in your pipes all the way to your home to keep that water safe. Ah, okay. So, so some people don't like, oh, my, my, my water tastes like chlorine. But that's to keep everybody safe. Correct. Right. Correct. And we try to keep it um, the lowest we would ever, you know, the minimum would be like a one. Okay. It usually leaves the plant somewhere between a 2.5 and 2.8. Okay. Um, it goes into our clear well and then goes out into the system. Okay. But that's so it can actually go through the pipes. It can get to the tanks you see out in the area and it's still got a chlorine residual so it stays healthy water. Okay. I, I, like, I like how when you start throwing out pH numbers and we're all standing here like, uh -huh. like oh, we yeah, know. Okay. <laughs> like we, you could say, oh, 100. We'd be like, yeah. I smile <laughs> and nod. <Yeah. laughs> um, I know my African cichlids need a pH of 7. That's all. Yeah, that's, okay. there you go. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I got. Well, I am curious. So what exactly does the chlorine do? Like, what does it protect against? How does it protect? It's it's a disinfectant. Okay. And so it's going to um, it's going to protect from like bacteria, um, E. coli, um, you know, any impurities. And so that's the point of it. Oh, when uh, so my daughter does scouting stuff and camping and they will go out camping and, the, and the, if they collect water from like the stream, then they have to put something in it, right? To make it safe to drink. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it, what is that called? It's like a, it's got like a little bit of a brown color and that's like a disinfectant. Right. So basically our chlorine is kind of like that. Exactly. And I'm not exactly sure. I can't think of what it is. <laughs> it escapes me. <laughs> I'll have to ask her later. But, but it's really cool. If you get a chance, go to our YouTube channel because the, the, the part that was really cool for me is because those, those wells or those, Swimming pools are like what forty feet deep, right? And they right. let me go down in one with the camera while they because they big crane lifts these gigantic bags of rock and sand and they slice them open and, and then they got spread it all around and they let me get down in there while they were doing it. It was really cool and it was a really hot day, but it was really nice and cool down at the bottom of that thing. It was really <laughs> nice. Anyway, if you get a chance, check that out on our uh, YouTube channel. Now I know you brought some stuff with you today, yeah. and that's the layers of layers. Of right. It's, so it's, it's going to start with rock and right. then rock and up to sand, and it just works its way through. Right. Correct. Yeah, this is just to. This is actually water out of my home tap, and this is a test kit. And this is just to kind of give an idea of the color change and what it would be. And I have hopes that I have chlorine in my water. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's got a motor wheel, and the goal is for it to turn pink. Okay. I might try to zoom in on you here and see if we can get a little closer on that. And, and uh, chlorine's not the only thing we put in the water. We also, as well as you know, there's fluoridation Correct. in the water. And it's not just for. Uh, protecting your teeth. Uh, this is something I, I learned from Jessica, who if you've ever been to our education days, uh, she talks about this a lot. Um, Jessica is a leak detector. And if they find a thing of water, they test to see if there's fluoride in the water. And if there is, that way they know, okay, this is coming out of the system. This isn't just random water from, from somewhere. So it serves a dual purpose. Right, and they will come, they'll bring it to us and ask us to test it. So we'll test it for them. And you know, sometimes it's very obvious. Yeah. So right here. There you go. Okay. And I just want to add in here too, um, our water treatment plants year after year win awards for the job they do. Correct. And our water as well also well, wins awards for taste, for quality. Um, so. so what you're trying to do on this is you're trying to kind of match the two colors. Okay to okay. see how much water, how much bleach is in your water. Mm -hmm. And so with this, I would say it's right at, uh, let's see, looks like it's about a two. Mm -hmm. Two, two. <laughs> right at a 2.0. Put it right there on the end of the table and I, I can get it, yeah. Yeah, 
I don't know if you can see the color difference. Gosh, they're really similar. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what you're kind of doing it. And that's a little subjective because I'm looking at it saying these match. Someone else may think it's a little bit right. like mm -hmm. a point one difference or yeah. something. But cool. That gives you kind of the idea. And so you also brought another thing, right? Well, what I found, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, but this was one of the first drip chlorinators Huntsville Utilities uh, purchased. And this was after a typhoid episode of 1917. And they realized that the chlorine helped fight the typhoid as well as they added a sewer line at that time. I'm going to see if I can bring it closer okay. to the camera. I don't know and I, I just it. thought, you know, that was... It's we'll post it. It's an amazing, yeah, it's an amazing historical document, you know, 103 right. years old. Mm -hmm. um, and they were going through something similar to what we're going through now. Yeah. Right. Cool. Although well, typhoid, I mean, that's that's bad stuff. Right, <laughs> right. And they thought that this, just in looking at it historically, this pretty much eliminated typhoid in the Huntsville area. Wow. wow. So I thought that was pretty remarkable. And, and I'll go back, you know, we have one of the oldest water systems in the country. Right. And we are a public water system as well. Just as we are a public power and a public natural gas system, um, so that's uh, we we could go on and on about the importance of being a uh, publicly owned. Uh, but that's for another show. We talked about a lot about that uh, two weeks ago with mm -hmm. uh, with Coy when we talked about public natural gas. Um, well, and it's what? important too. The the founders of Huntsville have always been really proud of our sure, water. Yeah. And you know, if if it weren't for our board back in the day exactly um because they um i talked to one of the board members you know and they were talking about the history of huntsville they started um actually cleaning the well water long before anybody really yeah. needed to clean it right because our wells i mean there's people in the county and stuff that are on wells mm -hmm. our well water here is pretty well, and there are standards set of course by by the government yeah. for for and we blow those away i yeah. mean we're far above what the standards are the required standards by the government. Um, right. A lot of times when we know that there's going to be something two years from now, some yeah. new standard, we will go ahead and start implementing it ahead right. of time. Right. And making sure that we can do it in a smooth transition and that we can be one of the leaders in in yeah. the state for whatever new regulation is coming out. And, and something that uh, I'd like to take a moment to clarify, we will get uh, questions from people saying, hey, I live in uh, I live in Madison and um, my water's not working, or I live in Harvest or wherever. Huntsville Utilities only supplies water to the city of Huntsville. Uh, yeah. um, if you live in Madison or if you live out in the county, uh, you could be getting your water from Madison County Water, Madison Utilities, uh, uh, what's the other one? Harvest New Hope. Yeah, Harvest, Harvest New Hope. Um, but you will still get your water bill from us. And that is something that was done so that uh, no matter where you live, it's the same with garbage. We don't do the day-to-day -day operations of garbage pickup or sewer, but as a service to the community, we put all that stuff on our bill that's going out. That way people aren't having to deal with multiple bills coming in. They can get their bill from one place, pay it to one, you still pay it to us and we make sure the money gets to the appropriate thing. So if you uh, live in one of those, if you live outside the city of Huntsville and you have a water issue, you can still contact us, but we're going to probably direct you to somewhere else because we can't really do anything about that. And honestly, uh, there's another nuance I want to add to that. So my new home is actually annexed into Huntsville, but I'm still on Harvest Monrovia water. So those who are more on the fringe, maybe in another district or yeah. in another town, may do your water. So just be aware of that. And of course, we recently uh, took the part of Hunts uh, the Limestone County water system. We incorporated part of that into our system as well. So yeah. it's. Uh, uh, you guys don't have to worry about that. That's all <laughs> stuff we have to keep track of. Yes. Uh, well, Caitlin keeps track of it more than I do. Right. But, um, but but there's that. Um, okay, anything else we want to talk about water before we move on to the, to the lightning round? You know I love the lightning round. It's I know. I, well, do, does anybody out there have any questions about well, water? Get oh, I'm to, sorry, I'm sorry. As if you guys have Hush. any questions. Amanda. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Okay, well, let's move on to uh, Caitlin's favorite part of the show, uh, comments, questions, Caitlin. 
Actually, we have any comments or questions? No, there are no comments or questions. Right, well, we are a little so, earlier than usual. Yes, we are a little bit earlier. Um, so just know that if you're watching this after the fact and you do have a question, please go ahead and post anyway. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. If you have a question now and you're watching live, hello to everyone watching now. Please let us know. We'd be happy to answer it for you. If we don't have the answer right now, we'll get it and we'll come back to you later. And I just want to, I just want to, I don't know what made me think of this, but I just want to say, last week's show was a lot of fun. Yeah. For good. those of you who saw it, it was multiple episodes of the same show. We were out at Calhoun for yeah. the Line Worker yep. Scholarship thing. Congratulations to Austin Thompson, who won the, or uh, not won, was the recipient of awarded. the uh, awarded. Thank you. The <laughs> the Line Worker Scholarship. Uh, we're working on another video for that. We saw some, and thanks to our friends at Calhoun, uh, who who uh, were there and helped us with some video and uh, and for hosting uh, a great event yesterday that was a really cool thing so what? along the lines of education i mean because mm -hmm. we've got so many what what does it take to be a water plant oh operator? yeah that's a good question yeah well we have to pass uh what is called a grade four uh certification test okay and uh who we administers have, that uh there's usually an outside administrator uh okay. the questions come from avion okay. it's set up through Vion. But usually there's like a source, like I went to H&R Block to take mine. Oh, they, okay. Because that was like a testing state. Kind of like when you take the SAT or the ACT, the right. neutral site. Exactly. You go to Switzerland. Yeah. And so, um, and it is a, it's a difficult test to pass, a uh, lot of information. It took me, I think I studied six or eight months, probably hours and hours every day mm -hmm. to pass that test. Um, I know the test has increasingly become a little more difficult. So now what we've started is a trainee program oh. to where we're actually having uh, two years mm -hmm. to have people go through the steps. ADM since then um, is talking about, they want you to have your grade two before you have your grade four, which gives you a little more knowledge of like the distribution system. Oh. Yeah. And so it'll let you know more about groundwater and wells and the pressures and, and different things that uh, yeah. they, they feel like is a really good, um, I guess, stepping stone for the grade four. And so we've started that and we actually have two trainees right now oh, that are, cool. are going through this new new program. And they should be very well versed by the time, you know, they get yeah. to where they take their grade four and pass and become certified operators. So if you're in school and studying, are you gonna study chemistry and you know, what kinds of classes would you wanna take uh, in school to well, they, prepare yourself? They're actually talking about having like an associate type setup for this. Okay. Hmm. Um, That'd be good. But it's a lot of math, you know, okay, good. a lot of math. Yeah. You're nice. gonna need, need to know <laughs> speed rates and pressures. Uh -huh. um, you know how to set up your chemicals and all of that. You're going to have to know, um, you know, like tendencies of water. So environmental biology mm -hmm. is good. Chemistry is great. Okay. You know, um, you know, my dad. When I was studying for mine, he's an aeronautical engineer. Oh. Oh, we lost okay. the video feed. One moment. I don't know what happened. We don't know what happened. Don't know what happened. Hang on. Give me a second. I'm sure you guys can still hear us. Give me a second. Anyway, my dad was an aeronautical engineer, so he has some really strong math skills. And so I went to him and said, make sure I know this. My test is tomorrow. <laughs> and he said, wow, I did that when I was going through engineering at you know, <laughs> the oh my gosh. University of West Virginia. He said, that's pretty impressive. And then that made me feel yeah. really smart. And I no, went and kidding. took the test the next day. So. That's impressive. Sorry, folks. We're coming back. I promise. We're just going to be the... Let's go ahead and we can start talking about the light here now. Okay. Okay, we should be... We should be back. Uh, okay, so uh, that brings us to the lightning round. Are we back? Not yet. I have one other thing. Please, please do, yeah. With the certification, you have to have... There we go. ...over 2,000 hours of actual... Wow. ...training at a plant. Um, and you can get some of that through some online opportunities, but most of it's going to be actual hands-on at a plant. Wow. So um, it takes a little while. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, you know, but you need it. Yeah, that's that's the kind of thing. And, and uh, Tony Owens, who was our uh, president and CEO prior to Wes, he was in the water department. Yeah. And, and 
went to went to Auburn. War Eagle to that? <laughs> uh, yeah, the chem chem uh, chemistry background. Actually, yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Um, all right, so let's move on to the lightning round. Our, our first uh, topic I wrote down because I can't remember these things always. No talk amongst yourselves. Well, now we're having audio issues. Give me a second. Uh, we probably have audio issues. We can still hear. Okay. Okay. But in, the last comment was double audio feed. Uh, I, I, I can't uh, fix that. Uh, 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 Sorry, guys. <laughs> I can't change it. I don't know how we're getting the double audio feed. Sorry. Is the camera picking it up? I can't. Um, I can't change that. Are we still getting the double audio feed? Anybody want to comment? Let us know. Well, I guess we have to be talking for them to tell. That's why I was asking. Testing, one, two, three. <laughs> All right, well, I'm just going to go ahead and, and keep talking, yeah. and we'll see what happens. Uh, usually, uh, the first part of the lightning round is um, the top post of the week. I forgot to look it up. So I'm going <laughs> to guess that it was... Uh, it was our water stuff. A lot, you know, yeah, the water stuff really did get a lot of... Uh, so I'm going to guess it was that. Um, on a serious note, we do want to extend our sympathy... Uh, our condolences to Mayor Battle and the Battle family on the passing of Mrs. Eula Battle uh, earlier this week. Her uh, service is today at 11. It is, of course, a private service uh, with COVID-19 restrictions, but it is being virtually, or it is being live streamed. So if you want to attend virtually, uh, I don't want to give them the wrong church name. I, I thought it was, well, I don't want to accidentally say the wrong church, and then people go there and and they're not seeing anything. Yeah. Um, you can find yeah, sure if you Google lot. it, you can find it. Yeah. But if you would like to watch uh, that service virtually, uh, you can do so online. But again, our, our condolences. Uh, 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 a great loss. She did a lot of great things, especially for education in this community. And uh, our condolences to the Battle family. Um, on a lighter note, um, we're all wearing masks. Mm -hmm. And we've all been wearing these masks for so long. Um, we all have multiple masks. Yes. But everybody uses their mask not to express their style or their love of something. I've got one for my uh, alma mater, Southeast Missouri State. You have your Auburn one you wear sometimes. Um, I've got my Huntsville one on today. We have some with the company logo on them. But for those of you who love bacon, there is now a way to wear a mask that not only shows your love of bacon, it allows you to smell bacon as you wear it. It is made by the fine folks at Hormel, wow. <laughs> who make meat, so yeah. they ought to know. And it's called the Breathable Bacon Mask. And it's a mask, and it's got pictures of bacon on it. And it's infused, I guess, with the scent of bacon. So what happens when you need to wash it? I don't know. Hopefully. But it seems, the, my thing about it is it seems like, because when we're in the bill, like if we're in your own office, you don't have to wear your mask. That's our regulation. But if you're walking around the building or within a meeting, or something, yeah, you got to wear it. If you were in a position where you had to wear it all day, it seems like that'd get a little old. Yes. Well, it's probably like anything else. After you've smelled it for so long, yeah. you don't even smell You don't smell even smell it, it anymore. Right. Nose blind. Yes. <laughs> and I think, yeah, so I thought, well, that, that's cool. And I believe if you just Google breathable bacon, I think it'll take you to a little video that shows it. I, I don't know. That's how I found it was I saw it in a... And uh, news of the weird, and it popped up. News of the weird. <laughs> yeah, it was really. I googled weird news stories this week, and that was one of them that popped up. All right. um, okay, so that's good. But I think yeah, a coffee one would be cool. Yes. Uh, uh, yes, I need one of those. Yeah. I love coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm thinking about doing is because I like cigars. So I'm thinking I'm gonna like you know maybe keep my masks in my cigar humidor. Interesting. And then I would smell cigars. Uh. Please don't I, bring those I, to work. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a headache. Yeah. Yeah. Amanda and I share this studio together as a workspace. So, uh, Okay, so before we wrap this up, a uh, couple of birthdays. A couple of birthdays we want to give a shout out to. Amanda, you cannot answer this question because you and I talked about this yesterday. <laughs> Today is the birthday, uh, 151st birthday, I believe, of John Heisman. Uh -huh. Who knows who John Heisman is? 
But you've got other to share than Amanda. That, but for the record, now, I, know, I did know. She did know when I Thank mentioned you. it yesterday. So it has to be the originator of the Heisman. Coach. It's exactly yes. right. Okay. The American football coach who legalized the forward pass, oh. and it is for him that the Heisman Trophy is named. So, so, uh oh, when you, uh oh, let me see your best Heisman Trophy post. Oh gosh, really, really, why? Well, I'm also on the fringe. Oh, you can God. you can move over or get in front of the table or something. This is okay, isn't it? Like the you're, you're close. You're close. Uh, Amanda, this is awful because I think I did. She tried I, it yesterday, I did and it, I, I did it all. I, I, I didn't, fell out of my chair. I didn't know. I went no, like this. No, 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 that's not it. That's not it. <laughs> I have no idea. This is not something I've ever. I don't know. This is <laughs> you're, you're very you're close. Better. You're very close. It's it's. The football's over here, the right leg is forward, and the right arm is out. I can't stretch down that low anymore because my knees are shot. Um, but that's so happy birthday to John Heisman. Yes. He's been dead since 1936, but happy birthday to John Heisman anyway. And, a legend. Do I? I said a legend. A legend. And the, uh, the second birthday I want to talk to you a little bit about. Amanda, we talked about this yesterday. Today, we're, we're fans of Weird Al Yankovic. Oh, oh. Yes. Today is Weird Al Yankovic's birthday, 61, I believe. Uh, so we want to give him a shout out, but we want to do more than that. Uh, right now, I'm making this official. I want to extend an open invitation to Weird Al Yankovic to be a guest on this show. And maybe awesome. we can come up with a parody, a song parody about utilities. I'm sure. I'm sure he could come up with a parody. And, all and of I know there's COVID restrictions, so if we have to do it virtually, that's right. fine. Right. But I'm telling you right now, I'm bringing this up every week till it happens. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, I can't hear the Backstreet Boys song, I Want It That Way, and not think of I bought it on eBay. I know. Yeah, I can, I'm that way eBay. with uh, Amish Paradise. Oh, uh, that's a great one. Yeah. You got a favorite? <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Yankovic, first of all, happy birthday, if you're watching, watching. Um, uh, yes. if you know him, or, and of course we're going to tag him in this, so uh, yes. if you're his manager, I don't know, neighbor, yeah. somehow, your dry cleaner, <laughs> uh, mention this, because this is going to, and we're going to keep track how many weeks it takes until Weird Al Yankovic is a guest on our show. So, um, uh, and so uh, before we do go, again on a serious note, we want to remind you to be warm, uh, be mindful of scammers who call and say uh, we're going to cut your power off unless you pay us uh, with a gift card in 30 minutes. That's a scam. Don't fall for it. Uh, call us. We can verify the status of your account. Uh, is there anything else we need to talk about before? Uh, Big thanks to Wilma for being here today. Yes, thank you. Always fun. She's been in some of our other videos. She was in the video where we did the, the filter thing I was talking about earlier. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, my son is a big fan of Wilma because when he interned for us one summer, he worked for Wilma. Uh, so, he asked about her all the time. Um, so, uh, and a reminder that all guests on Facebook Live Friday receive a copy of the Facebook Live Friday home game. It's uh, handy for mom, dandy for dad, and fun for kids of all ages, the Facebook Live Friday home game. So, until next time, I am Todd for Wilma, Caitlin, and Amanda, thanking you for watching and reminding you that you can't spell utilities without you. <laughs>